Welcome, my friends. My name is Angie Stewart. I'm here from Miami, and uh, I would like to welcome all of you to this first World Spiritist event. We are super excited. We will be transmitting these conversations throughout the world. So many countries united to talk about uh, Spiritism and Spiritism in our daily lives. So it will be beautiful. I hope you all can go throughout all the different conversations. We are here representing the United States. And I will start sharing with you what we will be talking about. So we will be talking about today about the moral laws. And that they are in the Spirit's book, in the third part of the Spirit's book. And that there are 12 moral laws. So these are all the laws. So there are 12, as you can read through. But our focus today will be the law of justice, love, and charity. And consequently, the moral perfection. And to talk about it, I will bring here three great friends. And all of them are really focused on Spiritism in English. And this is a blessing because we can participate in events like that and we can disseminate this beautiful Spiritist philosophy. So I will talk very shortly about uh, each one and then we can already bring them and start talking. So I am uh, Angie Stewart, I'm in Miami and uh, I'm a, a worker of uh, Mia Inner Light and also Kardec Radio is a wonderful online tool. And we will have uh, Danielle Assisi. So Danielle is a member of California Spiritist Association and also the Spiritist Conversation podcast. And Danielle is in San Diego, beautiful, sunny California. We also have uh, Marcia Trajano. And Marcia was a member of a Christian Spiritist Community of Atlanta and also U.S. Spiritist Federation. But Marcia moved and now she is in Nashville. And finally, our friend Flavio Zanetti. He is a member for many years of the Allan Kardec Spiritist Society of Massachusetts and also Spiritist Conversation podcast and Flavio is in Boston. So let's welcome all of them. Hello, Daniel. Hello, friends. I forgot the mute button. Good to be here with you. Very good to have you here. Super excited. It's going to be our new Spiritist conversation today. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And uh, Marcia. Hello, Marcia. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, Angie. Hi, Dan. Super happy to have you here, too. That's Absolutely. really a new thing in Nashville. This is really cool. <laughs> and finally, Flavio. Hey, Flavio, how are you? I'm doing fantastic, Marcia, Dan, and Marcia. Uh, I'm sorry, Angie, Dan, and Marcia. Doing great. It's good to be here. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. Super, super excited. Thank you all to be here. We are representing the U.S., so let's go. We don't have much time. We want to start talking about these beautiful moral laws. And, uh, you know, they wanted us to start explaining how these laws appeared, how we, we have knowledge about it. What can we start talking about this? Oh, great question. Do we, do we want to get right into it, or should maybe we talk about you know, the Mosaic Law to start, maybe Jesus' revelation, and then Spiritism. Ah, yeah. just jump straight into it, my friend. <laughs> Why did I volunteer then? <laughs> we've only got, we've only got 45 minutes. All right, all right so let's, let's make that. So I think, I think that what I really like about these laws, right, and the approach in general that we see in Spiritism is that, um, that we have paid particular attention to the fact that there are laws that emanate from God, that there is an order to the universe, 
Mm -hmm. And we differentiate that from human laws that change over time. And in a roundabout way, I guess what we can say from like a high level perspective is our human laws are slowly advancing towards finding out what the true moral laws of the universe are. As we grow in understanding as a society, our laws change. Hopefully they become fairer, right? Um, but there are some laws, like in, we have 12 of them mentioned in the third part of the Spirit's book, and we can talk a little bit about that too, that hint to us what are these underlying special laws that the universe kind of uh, rotates around, right? And so, so when we say moral laws, I think my my main my main thing is we're not talking about human laws. We're talking about our desire to understand how the order of the universe works. Yeah, how's that, well, Flavio? So like divine laws, right? As opposed to moral. Yes. Because the, the, the word moral has different meanings for different people, right? That's why yeah. it's, it's catchy yeah. to use that word, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that you know, before we start talking, I actually forgot to tell a short story that I wanted to say right in the beginning to connect with all this. So, so I press the rewind button then. <gasps> Let's go back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy this is a conversation. So it's good. It's supposed to be fun. So the little short story, the short story I wanted to say is that uh, Aroldo Dutra G is a, a very famous uh, uh, spiritist speaker in Brazil told this story just like a, like a Jesus told so many stories in the past. So I think it's fun to start with a short story. So there was a lady in Minas Gerais who was extremely afraid of flying, but she had to fly. And then this day she went she, and she's like, everything will be good. And she was happy that she was sitting right next to a little girl. She was seven years old. And then she was like happy because the girl was like coloring. She's super calm. Okay, into 30 minutes of the flight, a lot of turbulence, a lot of turbulence. And this woman got super, super scared, stressed. And she looked at the little girl. And the little the dog girl, also got scared. Gotta be my careful. dog wants to become a <laughs> it's, it's a good story. It's a good story. It's a mercy. The dog, the dog to totally it. is into it. It's to hear about it. So the little girl, she was super calm. And then this lady, during the turbulence, she was continuing stress. And she asked the little girl, my dear, how can you be so calm during all this turbulence? And she said, well, my father is the pilot. I trust him. Nothing's going to happen. And then she starts thinking she has so much trust in her father that the nothing is going to happen to her and nothing's going to happen to this flight. So when she put in her life and when we put in our daily lives, it's like a God. God is the pilot of this big airplane and we are all the passengers. So we have to have this faith, this trust. The laws are perfect. So we have to understand, to work, and to adapt it through it. So can I, can I say something? Yeah, what exactly. Because um, when we start talking about spiritism, and we are all here to, to discuss specifically about the laws as it pertains to understanding this wonderful body of work, uh, what I find it fascinating, the, the chapter, the part three of Spiritus' book, is actually how everything, like you said, Angie, connects. It's, it's truly a link of uh, this concepts and discussions that they connect. And understanding those laws make me much easier to understand the overhaul, the, the, the entire body of work. So I think let's go ahead and dive in into the discussion of the laws, shall we? Yes. As I always, as I always do, I, I ask uh, interesting questions. Do not say tough questions. So, Angie, if I'm hearing this for the first time, you mentioned that we have to trust God, who is the author. We have to have faith that everything is going to be great, right? That the plane's not going to fall and we're not going to die. Should I just have blind faith? That no. yeah, because this is what's been taught to us for over you know six thousand years. Yes. Trust something else, and everything else will happen. But I think humanity has progressed in a way that. People have a lot more, you know, rational thinking now that a lot of folks see. I, I can't trust this because look at the world. The world's not a nice place to my eyes. Should I trust this blindly or what, what should I do? 
is. That how, was about a, use the moral, this, how do I use the divine laws to better allow me to understand the plan or the idea of this pilot that's really governing the world? Exactly. This is the thing. We cannot have blind faith. It's the same thing of a person, oh, I'm going to jump from the sixth floor, the seventh floor, whatever, and I have faith that nothing is going to happen to me. This is crazy. This is insane. So we have to understand that uh, we are the pilots of our own plane first. So we have to take a, a really control of our free will, doing everything we can to be a better person and try to adapt throughout difficult situations. Understanding the, the world is not perfect yet, and there are lots of problems, lots of difficulties, but we have to try to do the best we can to make the, the world better. Understanding there is everything working in some kind of a cohesion. It's not mm -hmm. things happening like crazy because of whatever reason. Even when we mention about the law of destruction, when people talk about the law of destruction, it's like, that's crazy. Earthquake killed thousands of people. But uh, is, this is something that had to happen if it's not a man that provoked, this had to happen for some reason. But uh, the consequence of uh, this is that a lot of people will get together, more loving, practicing more charity, trying to help uh, throughout this, uh, this whole terrible situation. And lots of beautiful actions will come through it. So this is uh, just uh, one of the points. May yeah, I you know, rewind? Go ahead, Dan. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, that's one of the laws that I would have renamed. I would not have called the law of destruction. Yeah. I would call a law of regeneration. Regeneration. Or transformation, yeah. right? Or, or transformation. transformation, yeah. It's that cyclical yeah. nature of uh, our world. Yeah, exactly. and, and, but, and, I, and I think that we need to, that's something that it becomes easier for us to understand when we take a spiritual perspective, right? Mm -hmm. When we put our thinking caps on as immortal spirits who reincarnate as many times as it takes for us to improve, then we see that what looks like destruction in one lifetime could be regeneration for our next phase. Or improvement the towards the other, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a great explanation because some of the folks that are watching right now, they don't understand. So when they take the spirits book and they read some of the laws, they're like, whoa, it's actually <laughs> scary. So it's wonderful that uh, the explanation you guys gave is really the regeneration, the modification. It's not something so terrible as uh, when we read yeah. can i rewind a little bit because um flavio was asking why are we doing this is a blind faith or not which leads to the first of those uh, 12 laws that you uh mentioned angie uh, the law of worship and uh two things that i would like to point out uh flavio and then talk about this non blind faith, right? The rational faith. But it's important for us to think, number one, that uh, the idea of worshiping is very much innate. It's very much universal to all of us, right? No matter where you are. You may be a child and or you may be an ancient elderly person in whatever culture. That idea that we connect with God is innate from prehistorical times. So that's number one. Number mm -hmm. two, I would like to highlight that we often think that worship is really uh, more of a ritual than a feeling, than a connection. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important. Ceremonies, rituals, all of that are irrelevant because what's important is what it is, the desire, the inner desire to connect with God, which means, and goes back to your blind faith, which means the desire to grow, the mm -hmm. desire to become better, the desire including to understand in my heart right now, I may have the perfect eloquent prayer, education, posture, in, in frequency by which I, I worship God. But if I can find in myself that I am harboring, oh, thoughts of, uh, say, jealousy or envy or whatever, that I, I'm, I'm really consumed by things that are materialistic and immature of me psychologically or emotionally, then I'm not able to really get close to God. 
So that leads to the nature of uh, spiritism that really tells us that we should not practice a blind faith, right? And uh, from that perspective, all of what we're doing here, including explaining the 12 laws that is part of the Spirit's book, is really to demonstrate that when we look at faith, when we look at God and the laws and all of this beautiful philo- body of work, this philosophy that is brought to us uh, through Spiritism, we see that we need to be very rational in that the reasoning behind our beliefs and how we connect is what's so important for us. But, but I can hear, you know, Joe Mo saying in the back, hey, Marsha, that's great, but my tradition asks me that I have to wear certain clothes or that I have to, you know, position myself in a certain way to connect with God. Mm-hmm. Doesn't that help? You do you, boo. <laughs> right? um, if that works for you, absolutely. Exactly. Right? That, that's right. what I think. If that yeah. works for you, I think what if we learn from you. spiritism is that we don't have to. But if it works yeah. for you, that's great. Keep doing it, right? Yeah. For yeah. example, I, I told this before many times, you know, uh, uh, I love praying when I'm taking a shower because mm-hmm. I'm a lousy singer. What else can you do when I'm taking a shower? Besides, you know, thinking or, hey, I'm going to use that five, ten minutes, right, to say a prayer, to connect myself with God. doesn't Flavio, matter what saying- we do, how we do it. If it works, that's great, right? Flavio, are you saying that you only pray twice a year? No, twice a week. Twice a week. <laughs> but there's also a component of this that's important, right? You do you, and that means that maybe you is not even any ritual or ceremonies whatsoever. I don't mm-hmm. subscribe to any formal religion, and I still can worship to God. And I yeah. think this is, to me, the most beautiful part of, of this law, that by my actions, through love, and, and how I conduct myself and desire what's good to, to, to me and to the others is where I am praying the best, which is charity. Yeah. There is yeah, also, I think I... One, one, I'm sorry, uh, Dan, very quick. Go ahead. There is also one point that uh, some people don't understand. Like in, in spiritism, we know that. We know mm-hmm. that we can talk to our loved ones anywhere. We can be in the shower and we can do a prayer. We can connect with our loving father or whoever mm-hmm. and send a loving message. But to some people, they are so connected to that thing that they have to actually go to the cemetery. And only in the cemetery, they will be able to talk to their loved ones. And in spirit is we know there is no need for that. There is just mm-hmm. the location where the body was put. And a lot of spiritists, they actually don't even want to be buried. They don't want to be, they want to be cremated. So it gives this sensation of freedom. We are actually everywhere and we can have this connection anywhere. Sorry, Dan, go, go ahead. <laughs> no worries. I was going to say that there's an interesting corollary, right? So we are saying that we don't need form or pomp or circumstance to connect. And I think that's the key thing from that piece is if it works for you, do it. But don't feel like you have to have a sp- special clothing or a special, uh, you know, uh, artifacts or that you have to worship at a specific place either. Right. But if you want to go for it, but don't limit your connection to the divine by thinking that you can only do that during those moments. Ideally, we would do that every single day and every single moment when we just are in an elevated like brainwave. Right. When we're thinking about uh, good and kindness. So so that's a that's a great, great um Great all-around topic there. Yes, very, very yeah, good. What, what I like, what I like about the uh, uh, Kardec, you know, does in the third part of the Spirit's book. To me, the the, uh, the most important piece that he collects those twelve, you know, chapters or twelve specific laws is that he establishes some of our duties, not only for God, for example, in the uh, how we worship, you know, God and so forth, but also some of our duties with our own selves as well as with our neighbors. I think this is the beauty of this, right, this, this, this part, because it's a, it's a three-pronged approach, right? It's our duties, you know, against or, or towards God, towards ourselves, and towards the others. Can I say something else uh, that uh, sparked my imagination here, uh, Flavio, is when you say that three-part approach, which is cool, but also the you do boo, you do you boo, right? <laughs> Because uh, it's important for us to, to also remember that golden rule, right? Uh, do unto others what you want them do unto you. 
which is really interesting because it also adds that relative scale, right? You mm -hmm. only conceive of doing X to others as you would like for them to, to do to you as um, demonstrated by your psychological, spiritual, and emotional maturity. Therefore, I think it's very important for us to also think that, that even in, in terms of us talking about all those beautiful laws, that they are really led relative to where you are today mm -hmm. in your immortal soul's journey. Yes, so 100%, Marcia, and I, that's why I think it's so interesting. But I also think that it's, it is our attempt to get to the absolute, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and the absolute, in our case, that we can understand in terms of moral living and ethical behavior is this incredible figure that we call the Christ, right, which pops up. And so, so I like to think about Golden Rule 2.0, which is what he left us. When mm -hmm. he was, you know, on the end of his passage here with us, when he says, a new commandment I give you, a new commandment I leave you, that love one another as I I loved you. And that raises the bar, right? He's saying, yeah, yeah, I sure, it's nice that you care for others and you want them to do what you would like to them to do to you, but I'm calling you for a, for a higher bar, right? I'm calling you to, to think, to do to others what Jesus would have done to others. And that's like a whole different thing. And so I think these 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 laws like knock at the door and saying, here's how you can get there, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, and I think one question that's interesting too, these laws, these ten laws that we have there in those twelve chapters, they are really interesting. But they they are still our understanding of what those laws could be. I think tomorrow, Correct. right? Because spiritism continues to grow, we might understand that the law of society, for instance, that we see like listed just as a number, law number six. Mm -hmm. we might understand the law of society better, right? So we are also growing, even though the laws are immutable because God is immutable, right? If God is perfect, then God's laws have to be perfect, right? Because um, God wouldn't make a mistake. So his law wouldn't change, but our perception of the law might change because now we're a little bit, we're no longer a second grader. Now we're a fourth grader and we can mm -hmm. understand those concepts a little bit better. So I love that perspective that you brought us. And, and, and to add that, no, go ahead. Learn <laughs> to what Dan just said. I think we have we have four very talkative people. I know. <laughs> you just need you. I invite us to God to talk. That's, right? that's <laughs> what Spiritism does to us. It just gets all excited. <laughs> that's why we we are all speakers because we talk a lot. So, One thing so that to, I would like to 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 talk real is quick, like, to, to tag on what Dan just said. I think when he mentioned. The, uh, the our own interpretation of these, for example, laws, as Kardec brought law of society, which is the sixth one, and also the law of equality. When we look at society right now versus society 50, even 20, 30 years ago, right? People were not looking at to you know to others that were different than them and thinking they deserved the same you know uh, things that they did. So the whole idea of us seeing each other as equals, right? It's getting a lot more popularity these days than it's ever been, right? Because our societies are improving. For example, right, women rights as human rights, mm -hmm. right? A Black Lives Matter movement. We talked about this many, many times. It's us as a society, us as a you know group of individuals connecting more and more with these divine or moral laws and making mm -hmm. an impact into our own communities, into our own societies. But hang on, it's been published in 1857. Yes, but it's taken us a little while to, to really grasp the concepts. The Kardec and the spirits very eloquently, you know, uh, uh, gave it to us, right? Gave us. Just talking about the, what you just mentioned, Flavio. Uh, we know we talk about the law of society. Society works for for all, and uh, especially now in this very conturbed society, people fighting the Democrats, Republicans, and uh, also in Brazil, a lot of corruption. But people always say like, oh, they are the wrong ones. They are doing the wrong thing and blah, blah, blah. But we have to look at the ourselves. Are we doing our best? Because many times we accuse people, politicians of being corrupt, but we are doing little corrupt, corruptive things in every day so we have to really pay attention to oh when you don't declare something to pay less tax this is corruption so we have to look <laughs> into our actions our behavior before we start I, talking about the others funny message because when jesus said watch and pray 
He actually meant watch yourself, not others, and pray. People, you know, sometimes uh, they change the meaning. Let me watch everybody else while I'm still here doing my own thing and yeah, yeah. even questionable things. I think you're spot on. And, and these natural laws, if we read them really carefully, it's an invitation for us to really self-assess our relationship with God, with ourselves, and with others. That's why I think it's so important for us to study these, right, the third chapter of the Spirit's book. Because it gives us, right, this uh, 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 guideline, guidelines of how we should behave or how we should conduct our lives that brings us closer to what God expects us to do. And the moment we do that, the more we do that, right, this is a very different, you know, I'm going to take a tangent here. The more connected we are with these laws, the happier lives we live, folks. Exactly. That's what we learn through Spiritism, right? I think this is the beauty of it that people oftentimes you know forget. Exactly, it's less pointing fingers and the point the finger for you. <laughs> what would I do in that situation? Mm -hmm. And uh, and yeah. maybe think people would think very differently. And what can we talk about law freedom? So, are we free to do everything, anything we ever wanted? Is it that's exactly the interpretation of the law of freedom? Of course. Not. <laughs> Damn it, you were ugly. Can I say that? <laughs> you're also you're also free to misinterpret that law, Flavio, if you like. <laughs> right. No, this is a no, great, it's a, great it's, question. No, it's a great point. I think that we have a lot that, right? We conf we confuse mm -hmm. freedom with free will, right? Just because I can do everything doesn't mean that I should, of course. But that I actually am able to do that all the time. Whenever you make a choice, there are consequences to those choices, yeah. which means that, you know, you might not be able to avoid those consequences. It's just a natural law. That's why we're talking about here. We see that in physics, right? We see in the physical world, every action, there's a reaction, right? Um, and there's a moral component to that, too. So we have the freedom. Uh, we have beautiful freedoms that we sometimes forget, right? The freedom of thought, for instance, our greatest freedom. We can think whatever it is that we want to. But it doesn't necessarily mean that we can do everything that we want to. Sometimes we just can't and sometimes we shouldn't. So it's interesting for us to think about that because I think to a greater extent, our freedom or, you know, it's it's curtailed by the freedom of others. Like I don't have the freedom to enslave you. Right, mm -hmm. Flavio? So that will be me exerting what I believe to be my freedom, but then mm -hmm. impinging on yours. And that yeah. would not be OK. Right. So there are consequences. I think that the freedom is best understood to the lens of cause and consequence. Of the beholder. And if you're following us through, from the United States, even the First Amendment, right, which is freedom of speech, we have some limitations to that. Every time you know, freedom of speech is used to slander, obscenity, you know, hatred or anything like that, it's not, it's not protected under the law. So yeah. people confuse freedom of speech. I can say whatever you know, I want. And actually, it's not right there. And Kardec also mentioned this very well in when he talks about, you know, the law of freedom. And I think it's important for us to, and I think, Daniel, you, you alluded to it, the, the boundaries of the freedom, right? And, and Voltaire, I think, uh, uh, even prior to Kardec talking about it through the spiritual uh, answers to his questions, brought the same thing. It, it's freedom so long it will not hurt the other. So mm -hmm. your freedom ends at where the freedom the other one begins. And I think it's important uh, from that perspective, Angie, because we are in a society today that uh, you mentioned before, it's very much um, at odds with each other because we all believe that my belief in my own infinite uh, anonymity freedom. I, yeah. Well, anonymity, right? Because we think that we it's it's an anonymous to to cry out and say whatever. I think uh, Flavio mentioned that. What did you say? You ugly and <laughs> right? And there's a, an anonymous. I don't, I don't, I don't that. That. <laughs> These were the most good-looking human beings. Yes, I don't. I was gonna say in that particular instance, it's rare, but Flavio was actually right. <laughs> but it's it's important to 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 understand freedom free will, right, and action and reaction. And I think it was put here before that all of those as natural laws obey 
physics and obeys that universality. It doesn't matter that this century, let's say, or this decade, or or this end of the century, beginning of the century, that there, our society is becoming so divided, so divisive. Yeah. We we are free within those constraints. How do we how do we separate free will and freedom then? Just because just people really make, make confused, right? Flav, mm-hmm. can I jump jump in here really quick because I think this is just uh, ten seconds. This is one of the examples that we were talking about where one law, right, works in concert with another. The law mm-hmm. of freedom that we're just talking about and the law of society that we had just talked about. Got to go, because yeah. we live in a society, you don't have absolute freedom to do what you want. I mean, you could do things, but you have consequences, right? So, so we have to, in society, together, right, respect each other's freedoms as well. And, and as a result, it relates specifically to the next law, the, the law of justice, love, and charity. Before we change laws, please, please, yeah. please. How do we, how do we, how do we help our, our listeners or viewers to differentiate between a free will and freedom? I think that, that's, uh, that's important, right, for us to really yes. close this. That's a great yeah. one. Yes, go ahead. No, no, I'm going to ask you guys. You are the experts on this. <laughs> Well, I, I, I can take a stab at it, and, and uh, the, the, the three of you can add to it. But to me, I always think of a free will as my will, my freedom to do whatever. But uh, it, it, it's absolutely connected with the, 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 my freedom is, is, is within the framework of consequence to my actions. So the more free I am, the more responsibility I, uh, I have for ins- to answer, if you will, to those actions or the thoughts even that I've had within my free will. So when we think of that, and that's what I would like to, to bring here because it makes sense to me, is a child has freedom, but it is limited to what the child can do, right? Often uh, his or her uh, freedom or, or will to do some things is curtailed within the framework of age, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, uh, as spirits, as immortal spirits, as spirits in evolution, our freedom grows in the direct uh, uh, correlation to our growth and maturity as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a great example, and I think that in some cases, to piggyback on that example parents might choose to limit a child's free will for their own good. Correct. So I might not let my child eat ice cream for breakfast, lunch, and dinner because I know that will damage him. He is not yet at a phase where he can understand that, but I can interact uh, with him as a parent and because I am this position, right? And I can prevent him from uh, eating chocolate all day long. And in many different ways, that's not different than what we do spiritually. Sometimes the spiritual world will curtail our options too because we would be doing harm to ourselves beyond the level yes. that is helpful for our learning. So, yeah. so free will is limited to our conditions and to our understanding, as uh, Marcia was saying, right? Um, mm-hmm. And so some circumstances, your, your free will is somewhat limited because of the, op- the actions and reactions of, of life, but also because um, there, somebody might be running interference to prevent you from harming yourself. Yeah, and if I could just you know uh, tap this into one one uh, bigger bucket is there's no such thing as freedom without responsibility. Right? This is what right. people oftentimes confuse. Right? Mm-hmm. Of course, we have freedom, but we're also responsible for everything we do with our freedom. And if our freedom goes beyond, for example, societal laws or divine laws, we're still responsible for the outcomes of that. Whereas yeah. a child, right, unbeknownst to him or her, doesn't have the, the uh, cognitive responsibilities to be able to respond to that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why, right, it, it, it's, a, it's a different you know, uh, uh, categorization of freedom, so to speak. Yeah. Guys, and that you. awareness, yeah, and that awareness is a sign of psychological maturity. Correct. Mm-hmm. Right? 100%. And spiritual maturity, too. So when we understand and embrace the fact that we have limits of, of choice, right, we are taking our step towards becoming a more responsible human being slash immortal spirit in, in general, right? So that's a, a really good point that you make there, Flavio, because it's important for us to know that we, yes, we have, like, sometimes we say, we see this, like, I know my rights, right? But do you know your responsibilities? 
Yes. Because there's Rich. also rights and responsibilities, right? And I think that we're in a phase of human development, societal in general, that we are very much into my rights, but not into my responsibilities, mm -hmm. right? And I think that that means that we're getting closer to eventually moving away from, I just want things from me, 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 and let me think about those around me as well, right? And be considerate to yeah. others. Beautiful, beautiful. So let's dive in now in the main one, the law for justice, love, and charity. So uh, this law is it's very, very, well, all the laws are very important, but this mm -hmm. is so intrinsic to, to spirits. We can start already mentioning the, the beautiful acts of, uh, of our master Jesus, you know, in the time that the society was already very divided. He was hanging out with, uh, with the sinners of the time to teach us, to teach us to stop being so judgmental. You know, he was hanging out with the prostitutes. He was with the ones that uh, they were actually receiving the money from the Jews to pay the Romans. And they were considered the ones that nobody wants to be around. But uh, he said... I came to the sick, and that's where I should be. And uh, in uh, Spiritism, we talk so much also about uh, love, 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 charity, that uh, only throughout uh, charity we can improve, we can be better. Let's, let's talk about it. All right, so let me just play devil's advocate again. <laughs> Maybe for the first time, Angie, you're telling me that there's justice in the world? I look out there, I see a lot of suffering, a lot of people, you know, hungry, a lot of people without, you know, clothes, without, you know, a roof over their, sh their shop. There's no justice in the world. What are you talking about? Wait a minute, that? wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> I say, wait a minute. You say that because you don't believe that there is divine justice or that there are multiple existences. Or, I mean, we are immortal souls, therefore we have a prior existence to this one that will address those uh, human injustice. Can somebody talk mm -hmm. to it? So, yeah, can, let me stick, let's take a jump in here because I think Kardec did better than we did, right? Of course. Um, and so and he, he, was, he was really brilliant. <laughs> he was really brilliant. Um, and, in, in parts, and he says that, you know, that for every, for every consequence, there is a cause. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, which makes complete sense. And so if we don't see it's just a law of nature. If we don't see the cause of this consequence in this life, it must therefore necessarily have come from a previous life. So in this lifetime, if we just see this, it might be really unjust because we are just seeing this picture in time. We're not seeing the whole movie. Right. Mm -hmm. But if we had the ability to zoom out and understand our previous lives, we may have a better grasp on why is it that our current shortcomings, our current handicaps, our current challenges, whatever you want to frame, are the way they are. Because we bring with us the consequences of our previous lives. So I think within that framework, the framework of the immortal spirit, which spiritism mm -hmm. is really good of reminding ourselves of, right, that we're not incarnate beings only. We are spirits first. That are temporarily here. When we find ourselves thinking about ourselves as immortal spirits to have many lifetimes, the concept of justice fundamentally shifts. Yeah, a hundred percent. And it's uh, in my eyes, my humble eyes, it's impossible to see justice in the world without having the uh, reincarnation framework. It's right. Hard, the, yeah. This is only one chapter of our one series of our Netflix, right? A uh, whole Netflix mm -hmm. series. So when you look at that, I think it, it fundamentally changes our interpretation of justice. So if you're following us, if you're listening or watching us uh, and don't believe in reincarnation, we invite you to look the world in a different eyes, right? I know we're not here to talk about reincarnation alone, but it's really, really uh, changes or calls for a different type of reflection from ourselves to look at this environment, right? Through the, through the lens of reincarnation. And piggybacking on what Dan just said, you know, the immortal spirits answer Kardec. When he asked him, oh, how can we define justice? If, yeah, if my memory like goes that. correct, he says, they said justice is basically respecting the rights of others. That's justice. So every time yeah, we yeah. respect the beautiful, rights beautiful. of others, right, we're being just, we're being fair. Yeah. And yeah. this, I mean, look, look at the repercussions, right? 
Yeah. And you know, and this this is beautiful, Flavia. And you know what I like the most about this law? It's a question for you guys, right? Have you noticed how in this particular law they've chosen to put justice, love, love and charity to together? Man. You could break those apart and do three of them, right? But I think that there is an intrinsic connection between the three of them, right? This is what I get from them putting together. You guys agree? A hundred percent. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. Can, can anyone explain that to everybody else? Oh, I cannot. I cannot respect the rights of others if I don't love my neighbor. If I don't see them as like me, as part of my quote unquote family, uh -huh. why am I going to respect their rights? Right. Yes. So that's and, an easy. And, that's an easy answer, right? And with yeah. respect comes love, right? Forgiveness, which is which is charity, right? Yeah, yeah which, which is which is intrinsic also in, in the justice yeah. from a. Yeah, a multiple lives perspective, the forgiving yourself, forgiving others, but also there's the question of with forgiveness in respect is the idea of goodness, of loving and, 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 and being charitable in all the transcendental um, significance of that word, right? Which is love in action. So hang on, Marcia, Marcia are we breaking up the transcendental secret of this world <laughs> that if we <laughs> others? If we love others and we practice justice, the world's going to be a better place. Is that we, it? Yes, and we. I don't will think be that's a, a secret, place. Flavio. Yes, <laughs> it might be transcendental, but it's no longer a secret. But uh, you know, uh, all of this that we were talking about before I became a spiritist, I couldn't understand all these differences because I didn't understand the reincarnation. You know, mm -hmm. there is lots of prejudice against reincarnation. Oh, reincarnation, it doesn't exist. It's something evil. But uh, when uh, you, you, you start studying spiritism and you really understand that we, it's, it's silly to think that we only have one life. And mm -hmm. what kind of a loving God is that that mm -hmm. makes me healthy and somebody else, uh, the baby is born full of uh, diseases and illness and difficulties. So the law of reincarnation really open up my mind and I'm sure it will open up the mind of so many others that uh, to understand the beauty of it. And, uh, you know, as you were mentioning, uh, Marcia, charity, you know, is all connected, the justice, love and charity. So if my life right now is good, I I'm happy, but uh, you can never be fully happy if your neighbor is going through a very hard time and you just don't care about it. What kind of law is that? That's when a, a spiritism brings these moral laws in our hearts and our minds. And we understand for me to be happy, I have to learn, even if it's not intrinsic from my personality, I have to learn to help others. So one day the world will be a whole different world because we will be helping each other naturally. Nowadays, when we see on TV someone doing some beautiful charitable act, it's like, oh, because but, of but I, think, Angie, I, I, I do see, I do see progress already in the making. If we look oh. outside, right, with movements, for example, as I mentioned before, women rights, talking about women having the same rights as men. Why not? We're all the same. I could be in this incarnation of men, next incarnation of woman, and vice versa, yeah. right? Well, yeah. I'm in moral spirits. Same thing with you know racism in the world. There's still a lot of racism out there. Yes, there is. But the society now is looking at and thinking to themselves, most people, I should say, until it's good for everybody, it's not good for anybody. Yeah. When I look at this, yeah. I see progress, right? I Can see I add progress a, another in dimension to if Nobody wins until everybody wins. Yeah, yeah. Everybody wins. Exactly. but there's also another dimension, and I think it, it comes back with the definition. When we talk about justice, we talk about good and evil, right? So let's ooh, erase the word evil to the word, the ability or capacity to hurt the other, right? So good and the capacity to hurt the other, including ourselves. And I think justice comes because right now in our evolutionary path, we still don't understand when intentionally or not we're hurting ourselves or the other. And I think as we evolve, uh, Flavin, thank you so much for, for, for the reminder that we are progressing, we are evolving. But as we also evolve, and, and, and I think Dan mentioned the psychological maturity, right? The more we evolve as, as human beings that are spiritual in nature, the more we'll be able to understand our actions 
thoughts and words really can have a powerful uh, ability to hurt or not. So I think that's the dimension that we need to start also thinking about it. How can we forgive? How can we understand? And how can we understand from a psychological maturity when we are really self-centered or not, when we are more uh, linked to God and understand a less material view of ourselves? Well, our time is finishing. So Flavio, and then your last thoughts. We are all we are over time, but it's a beautiful, beautiful law. Angie, we all always do women first. <laughs> always. We're gentlemen here. Even though some people might not think about it, but we're you were gentlemen. So why don't you start with your thoughts, Angie? Was this helpful to you? How can okay. you go for you? My final thoughts is that to people that don't know Spiritism, this was very helpful. We were able to bring a little bit of each of the laws and uh, open up the minds of, uh, of uh, ourselves and, and so many others. And uh, the final portion, understanding the, the world is already much, much better than what it was. And uh, it will continue. And as I was saying before, nowadays, when we see some charitable thing on TV, we get surprised. But in the future, that will be so normal because everybody will be doing it all the time. Then. Absolutely. So, so, so I go next, I go next. All right. So I think that um, I love these kinds of conversations. I am not pl plugging spiritist conversations here, mind you. Um, we love because, this conversation. <laughs> um, but I bias. think that's a, but <laughs> total bias. But I think what 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 it's really exciting about looking at these more laws for me, right, on a personal level, is the fact that it's a constant search. It's a constant quest for being a better immortal spirit and therefore human being. So it's a constant. Uh, uh, inquiry is a constant adventure to try to understand the world around me and inside me so that I can become a better human being and like Flavio said before and therefore happier not because I ought to but because it will make me happier so I love these conversations because every time that we study a little bit more we talk a little bit more maybe there's something else that kind of clicks and provides us with new insights or a new understanding of something important uh, on how to live our lives. And that makes us human being, better human beings. And that's what I like about spiritism, this progressive nature. When we are always learning more, we are all striving to be more and to be better in a non-pressure way. So thank you very much, guys. Beautiful. Marcia already spoke. Flavio, your last uh, impressions. We are over time. Bring us home, Flavio. Quick, yes. So make I, it good. See, make it good. I see the uh, third part of the Spirits book as training wheels for our bicycles. Okay, we're all children if you look, you know, from a spiritual perspective, because we still have a lot to learn. And the uh, divine slash moral laws give us those training wheels that every time we oh, let me go back into in shape and really gives us that teaching opportunities, right? That we all need to become better. And the better we become, as we mentioned before, right, the, the uh, closer to God we arrive. And the closer to God we arrive, the happier lives that we'll live. And if I could sum up all of, the, uh, all of Jesus' teachings, I want to go back to love. Because it's the uh, feeling for excellence that really help us, right? That really uh, uh, bring all of the, uh, the, uh, the instincts, all of the, uh, the thoughts. And if we don't feel that, and the moral laws, divine laws, help us with a different interpretation of love. Loving everybody. Not only those that look like me. Not only those that have the same last name as I do. Right? It's really seeing everybody as siblings. I think this is critical for us to think with a very different perspective. And the divine laws bring us there. Beautiful. Beautiful. My friends, we, we have to finish. We could continue talking here the whole day. Thank you so much to all of you that uh, were with us. So this is the, the conversation from the U.S. about the First World Spiritist Month. It will be a blessed month to all of us. And again, thank you so much, Dan, Flavio, Marcia. It was wonderful to have all of you here. And uh, 
Bye bye, spiritists from all over the world. We will see you soon. Thank you. Bye bye.